So let's say you've made a neural network model using the Keras API, and now you're interested in computing the partial derivatives of your output variable with respect to your input variables. This will be a tutorial on how to do just that. So here we've got some imports, um, nothing fancy there. Uh, next up is going to be the neural network model architecture function, which returns a Keras model object where the output variable is a function of two input variable sources. So next we'll set up some simulation data so that we can train a model with. So we'll have 1500 observations. We'll have two predictor variables, x and y. They're uniformly distributed, ranging in values from negative two to two. And then we'll define our z variable as being equal to x plus y squared. So for multivariable calculus, we know that the partial derivative of z with respect to x should be equal to one. And we also know that the partial derivative of z with respect to y should be equal to two times y. So for whatever value of y we have, the partial should be twice that value. So now we can use our model definition function to instantiate our Keras model object from our input variables x and y. And then we can train that model just like how we would for any other Keras neural network. And as you can see, I have not performed your typical train test split, which is pretty much standard operating procedure for all things machine learning. And the reason why is because we have a really large number of observations relative to the small level of obscurity in the functional dependence of z on x and y. So basically, I know that the model is going to be a good fit to the data, and we'll also be able to verify that as well um, in a minute here when we look at the uh, partial derivative plots. So let's now look at these next two lines of code, which are going to be responsible for producing the partial derivatives of z with respect to x and y. But first, a note on the difference between a partial derivative and a gradient. A gradient is a vector of potentially multiple partial derivatives. And so we're actually going to get one gradient output for every input variable source in our neural network model. And since we have two input variable sources, x and y, we're actually seeking two gradient outputs. So in the first line of code, we're developing a Keras-based function which will yield the two desired gradient outputs, and we're assigning that function to the variable name model underscore gradient. So this Keras function here is going to return as output all of the gradients of the model output with respect to each of the input variable sources. And these gradients actually depend on the values of x and y that we're trying to evaluate the gradients at. So we need to provide that information to this function in the form of a list of model inputs. The model input at index zero corresponds to the input variable source x. And likewise, the model input at index one corresponds to the input variable source y. So to use our model gradient function, all we have to do is pass in pairs of x and y values. And I'm just going to use our original training data x and y variables because it's convenient. Now since the input variable sources x and y each only contain one variable, then their gradients are essentially the partial derivatives. So let's see how well our model is estimating the partial derivative values for x and y. So we'll plot the model estimated partial derivative of z with respect to x against x, and then we'll do the same for y. We're also going to plot the ground truth curves of each of these functions for comparison. All right. so. From the plot on the right, we can see that the model predicted partial derivative functions line up 
fairly closely with the ground truth partial derivative functions. And we can also take note that the model's prediction capability for computing the partial derivatives um, starts to break down at the end of their variable domains, um, just looking at the orange versus the red curves. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful.